everybody, Katie here with another episode of Cooking with Katie. And today, this one is for the kids. We are going to use this cookbook that I sell um, in House to Home. It's another lemon poppy cookbook, but as you can see, this one is When Life Gives You Kids. And this is actually um, a great cookbook. Here's today's recipe. We're actually going to make chocolate mud pies with piles, excuse me, with worms. And this is a great recipe. Because if you have little ones at home, they can actually help with this, which is pretty fun. Um, it does require a stovetop, as we're going to learn, even though it says no bake. But there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of steps that they can help with. There's a lot of cool recipes in here, too. Again, we're going to do other recipes from this book. I'm just going to kind of flip through this one. Um, we're actually going to do, at some point, make your own Play-Doh. So I know right now that there's some kiddos stuck at home. Um, and what fun... There's another thing in here for salt dough, so what a great arts and crafts project. Um, there's edible peanut butter dough, just all kinds of fun recipes. And I'll make sure that this is linked below um, in the description box. It is on the website. It is in stock. We're going to go ahead with that, and let me get to our actual recipe here. The um, chocolate mud piles with worms. So I went ahead and already got um, our ingredients. So I've got cocoa powder, I've got butter, some vanilla is sitting here. These are the rolled oats. I've got some sugar over here, the milk is chilling over here, and then of course the peanut butter. Well, I know that there's this big war going on between are you crunchy, are you creamy? So let me know down below in the comments uh, if you're team creamy or team crunchy. I think I get a lot more of the peanut butter when it's creamy. That's probably a myth, but that's what I go off of. So one thing you're going to notice here is I went ahead and just halved the recipe because I do not need a full recipe of sugary cookies in this house. What I'm going to actually put into the saucepan is not actually the, uh, the measurements here that are on the recipe. Again, it's been halved. Um, super simple. Really all we need is a saucepan, which I already have over here on the stove. We'll move over to that in a second. But today I'm going to be using my lemon poppy silicone spoon. So one of the things that I love about this, there's many, but the 100% high grade silicone or professional grade silicone is non-porous. So it doesn't stain. Um, in fact, this spoon is over a year, year and a couple months I've been using this spoon. And as you can see, I mean, it's got great edges. Again, it goes up to 500 degrees. So it can sit in the pan. You're going to see that a lot today as I'm stirring. I'm just going to kind of leave it there. Dishwasher safe. Just a really excellent um, kitchen tool. I also have my lemon poppy measuring cup set here. That's what I'm using. These are on the website. This spoon is on the website and it comes in red. So if you're not a fan of the yellow, it does come in red. Those are the only two colors. I hide mine in the drawers. Um, and then I also have my Tavolo measuring spoons. I talked about these in the guacamole video if you happen to see that. Again, I'll link them. Um, they are a discontinued item with the manufacturer, but the manufacturer is talking about bringing them back. So fingers crossed that they do because they're an excellent product. Again, I do have other measuring spoons in stock on house to home, uh, JD.com. So if you're in the, in the area for measuring spoons, of course the Pyrex, not a sponsor. Uh, this is an oldie but goodie. I've had it for years, things like that. With that, let's go ahead and move over to the stovetop and the saucepan and we'll get started. All right. We are now um, over our saucepan, this just basic stainless steel saucepan. And as any good amateur, not professional cook does when they have a new recipe, I went ahead and pre-read the recipe, but I'm just going to kind of go over the steps. Um, just so everybody knows, I am shooting blind right now, as in I cannot see the actual screen of the camera. So if I'm talking and there's things that are out of camera, that is why. Um, but the first thing we're going to do in a medium saucepan, we're going to combine our sugar... So there is our sugar. I'm going to remove the spoon here for just a second. And our butter, that's a cup of sugar. This is two tablespoons of butter. I did wash my hands, um, so don't worry about that. And then, let's see, our milk. So this is a quarter of a cup of milk. And there we go. We'll get that out of there. And uh, two tablespoons of cocoa powder and cocoa powder was actually I think the only ingredient besides the gummy worms that I didn't have um, at my house that I actually had to go out and buy to make this recipe so okay we've got our sugar butter milk cocoa powder we're gonna stir the mixture and we're gonna bring that to a low 
oil. So I'm going to kind of go medium high, um, just a little bit more towards the high section. And I'm going to go ahead and stir this together here. And we're going to let that get to a boil. I am using um, my stove at home, which is a glass top stove. So things are going to behave differently depending on the kind of stove that you have. If you're lucky enough to have a gas stove, um, I envy you right now. If you have a coil top stove uh, they are an induction stove, they all kind of handle a little bit differently as far as what temperature. And I think that's why the original chef who came up with this recipe made sure just to tell you what kind of a boil as opposed to tell you what kind of heat to put it on. So for my glass top electric stove, uh, it actually boils pretty fast. And so again, going kind of towards that medium high, a little bit on the high side, it's going to get hot pretty fast. Um, a gas stove, it's going to function different. An induction stove, it's going to function different. So just kind of play that one by ear and know that what you're looking for is that low boil. I'm trying to get this butter to melt. So it looks like you can actually see this on camera here. Um, so this is that low boil. So see how we're starting to get just a little bit of bubbles, not a ton. We don't want anything to pop. So at this point, we're going to turn off the heat and we're going to remove it from the heat. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to come grab the camera. So bear with me as I move you guys over here and get this repositioned. There we go. Okay, from here. We have removed from heat. Now we're gonna add the peanut butter. Oh, I can smell that chocolate. So again, this is a quarter cup of peanut butter, nice and creamy, and it is from the Lemon Poppy line of measuring cups. I'm gonna try to get all of that out of there. We'll scrape that off. And as you can see in the video, I didn't actually take the spoon out the entire time. And again, the handle isn't hot at all. The heat doesn't transfer up, which is really great. Um, especially if you have those kiddos that are helping, you don't have to worry about their little hands as much. So we've got our peanut butter in there. Now we're gonna add our vanilla. So it's a half of a teaspoon vanilla. We're going to get that in there and then mix until smooth is what this says. So I've got a little bit of peanut butter chunks. I don't know if you can kind of see it yet. So we're going to kind of scrape those sides. I'm a whisker at heart, so I like to stir as though I'm actually whisking things. All right, and that is looking nice and smooth there. I don't know why I just inflexed my voice on nice. Apparently I got excited. And then lastly, we are going to stir in the rolled oats. This is a cup and a half of rolled oats here. So we're going to stir these in, and I'm just reading ahead. Then we're going to drop by this spoonful onto wax paper. So let's get this in here. It is um, before noon while I'm filming this. I know, great time to make sugary dessert, right? So, and we do, it is spring in Eastern Oregon. So if the light kind of does weird things, that's because um, I have amazing natural light in my kitchen and clouds are moving in and out. So I apologize if things get randomly dark. That is why. Okay. So that looks delicious. Um, I am a huge fan of chocolate and peanut butter though, so I am already on board. Not that I plan to eat um, any more than one of these, because man, I have been baking a lot recently. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get everything moved over 
to my wax paper that I've got sitting over here ready to go. We are over here. This is actually the baking station in my kitchen. A few years ago we remodeled um, and we actually put one in here so you'll notice a countertop just a little bit different. This is actual butcher block. And then the cupboards above, I've got all my baking stuff. Um, it's a pretty cool deal. At some point I will do a video on what the kitchen used to look like um, and what it looks like now. In the meantime, I went ahead and grabbed a tablespoon. Let me get that in camera view here. And I'm just gonna grab kind of a heaping tablespoon amount and I'm just gonna kind of start placing these. And I don't know if this part is in film or not because I'm up at the top of the wax paper here. It's a little bit drippy. And we're gonna get these. I'm trying to make them all about the same size. I'm gonna get my finger in there. Again, don't worry, have washed my hands. Okay, so just so you guys know, this is still a little bit warm. So if you do have littles helping you, just be cautious about that. Um, I'm not burning my finger, but I can definitely feel the heat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and keep scooping. I should have put these a little bit closer together. It's okay, I can fix that. I'm gonna move my spoon here. All right, I can tell you right now that these smell amazing. So depending on the size of spoon that you grab and how big you want these cookies or mud piles to be is gonna depend on how many you make it doesn't specify in the recipe how many it should yield. And again, that's because you can kind of make them whatever size you want. So if you want little bite size, if you want a couple bite size, bigger. That just depends on you. Okay, so now that I have these spooned out, I'm not gonna worry about the little bit of chocolate on my fingers there because the next is super hands-on. So I went ahead and just grabbed some gummy worms from my local grocery store and the recipe calls for 20 again the recipe has been halved so definitely not going to use these and it it's to taste so it's however many gummy worms that you want but basically at this point you just press gummy worms into your cookies so i'm just going to go ahead and get these guys pressed in there So this is just a fun, it's just a fun treat, right? I mean, back when we were kids, most of us actually ate dirt. Now you get to eat chocolate and peanut butter with gummy worms called dirt. So I know there's no rhyme or reason to me shoving these in here. I'm sure um, if you like patterns and order, I am driving you nuts right now and I apologize. So you can actually curve these a little bit more. I have the advantage of looking at the recipe and then the pictures. They are kind of buried in there just a little bit. And so there we have it. So these are our mud piles with worms. Super easy. I think the whole thing took me less than 10 minutes to do, which was pretty great, including grabbing all the rest, the ingredients, having everything prepped and ready to go. I'm gonna let these cool before I do anything, so I will show you a picture of them plated in the video so you can actually see what they look like, because right now, with the heat, they're still super crumbly. So I will go ahead and do that. Again, anything and everything that I used that is from house to home, I will make sure is linked in the description box below. And if you found this video useful or liked the content, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. There it is. And subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.